Hey guys, it's Wolfmaiden, and today I'm going to talk to you about my trip to Beekaline, including footage I took before the game, photos, and just telling you about my experience. So without any more delay, let's get into it. So our journey started when we flew into Kansas. We took a road trip. We went to Montreal with some friends that were also going to Beekaline, including Kyo, who I went to Dark Tides with. Once we got to Montreal, we were a day early for the Grand Battle. So we went to Artisan's Day Azure, and we also went to Dracolite, which I got a whole other video's worth of footage from both stores, but here's a little sneak peek. Then later when we got to Beekaline, when we arrived, we checked in, we had our stuff all paid for and handled by the Voyage North. So we were able to get our, our wristbands for entry, a population card, and then we got some solar to start, which is the currency of the game. Then the sky opened up and it just poured on us while we were unloading our stuff from the car. But we did that, we got drenched, it felt amazing because it felt like we were in a never ending drought back in California. So I definitely let the water just fall on me and I was enjoying it, but it rained pretty hard. So we got all our stuff out, we went to our tent, we decided to change before the game started to kind of browse around and this was where I was gonna get a majority of my footage. But before that, here's a picture of me and Matt. We tried on our tabards. This was just after getting soaked, so excuse our hair. And then here is some of Ordo Camp. You can see already there was a big puddle there and here are some of the buildings that Ordo Servi has. And this is the tavern, which was pretty cool, packed with stuff. It was decorated, of course, with deer stuff. At night, it was really cool to hang out here. And the tapestry in here is amazing as well. Around the camp, they had spots for a fire and people to hang out. There were about three of them, if I remember correctly, in Ordo. And all of the guilds had a place like that. And these were what the tents looked like on the outside. You could lace them up to shut them. They all have numbers on them and everybody gets assigned one that's in the Voyage North. And I kind of peeked over. There's March Wardens were right next to us this time around. Although I'm not sure if they will be next year. And then Matt was kind enough to help me film this for you guys, but it is our tent before we really moved everything in there. We had our bedding and we had sleeping bags on top of the cots that they come with. And the bedding was a beautiful gold and white color. All the pillows also had similar or matching like white and gold on them and it was really pretty. So I did that with Matt and we went and checked out the little shops and things too as we went along. I didn't want to spend the entire time filming so this was a decision that I made beforehand. I tried my best to be as unintrusive as possible and to respect camps and stuff. During this time I met a few people who who came up to me and said that they were fans, which was really awesome. And it was crazy and it was really encouraging to see that there are people who watch what I do and are interested in it. So I really appreciate you guys coming up and I appreciate all of you. And I hope to see more of you guys also in the future. So the Ordo camp is actually really close to town and really close to the bathroom. So it's very convenient to be there. So the first few videos are of those buildings that are around Ordo Servi camp. And then this started our walk through Newtown. So I've actually realized there's so much footage that I have of Beekaline that I probably will make just a whole video with just footage from it to just put all at once. But you can see Newtown here, a variety of different shops that we already know and love, like Artisan's Day Zero, Kalmasil is also here, and a few other ones. We're here in Newtown selling goods and things. There was really so much shopping that could be done here. It, it was kind of cool because we came back multiple times throughout the week to shop. Geekaline really is exciting to explore. There's just so many places and so many things to do and get involved with and people to meet and it's just such a huge alive place from the families with children to the liveliness of the taverns at night singing and fighting and just everything that goes on it's such a magical place i would love to go back again and i hope i get the opportunity to But 
But yeah, so Beekling is a very large game. Some things I didn't film as I was going because I didn't even know they existed until we started playing. Like the Mage Tower, which is a little quest area, and there's a maid who you turn the quests into. But all of the quests there were in French. I think some English speakers bypassed that by possibly talking to the mage himself about said quest, but I'm not 100% on that. But there were English speaking quests, they were just on the notice board. So there still were English quests to do. After filming, I went back and had dinner, spent time with all the friends that I had made through the Voyage North, Zoom calls and things like that. So I spent a lot of time with old friends. We talked and we hung out. And then Otheros was also there. Kyo also being there, as I think I mentioned earlier. I went to Dark Tides with them, if you saw that video. And it was really awesome seeing them again and knowing that I'm going to have Dark Tides to look forward to again to see them again. So the rain I talked about earlier turned out to be a precursor to something kind of worse. And by kind of, I mean worse. Definitely worse. There was a monsoon. There was 18 inches of rain in 20 12 hours and it just dumped on the camps and two of the camps got pretty much completely flooded, flooded in different ways. One swept tents out and w they were unable to pitch them again, some of them. And then the other one flooded, still water flooded the March Wardens. So that was awful. Uh, to say it was rough, the first few days there is kind of an understatement. It was, it was pretty bad. I saw one of my friends go home because of it and it was actually pretty miserable the early part of the week because of that but people were just trying to make the best of it. We hoped that it would get better. It did. It did get better. So people were we're singing in the tavern that night. There was a lot of really tired people too but we were trying to 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 feel good and all that. So there was a lot of singing in the tavern, uh, a lot of interesting songs, some that I took home, like my mother told me was one of the songs that I learned. Uh, I'm not very well versed in sea shanties, but I'm going to be for this, especially since I'm going to start a project for songbook for all the future medieval fantasy LARPs that I'll be going to. And yeah, I think singing with people at Beekaline was one of the most interesting experiences that I've had and just learning songs and, and just singing them with groups of people. It was really cool. That was one of my favorite things. I definitely like to sing and I like to entertain people or find things that help people have fun. So I love doing that. It, there's just something different when you are drinking, you're singing, there's candlelight in a, in a crowded tavern. It's just, it's not something that you get to normally experience. I feel like it's, it's a different, it's a different world really. And also singing when you're marching to battle and on the battlefield is amazing as well. So I did see a couple familiar faces. One of them was the Dread Duck who covers Beekaline. He's mostly a Beekaline LARP YouTuber. I got to meet him, which was really awesome. I had a whole conversation with him. So I will link him down below if you haven't seen him before. He's really cool. You should check him out. And then somebody who I saw very briefly, I've been following for a while, is a uh, LARP Legion who was there. I saw him briefly on the battlefield. I never got an opportunity to talk to him for very long. I didn't know where he was at so I couldn't go seek him out either. He is a LARP YouTuber as well and he also focuses some of his videos on Beekaline as well so if you want to check him out he is in the description box below. So browsing the shops at Beekaline was something we did periodically throughout the week. We never really went to every single shop in one day. It was like oh we're here, here, here and then we left and did something else and then came back later and, and revisited. But there was everything you could possibly imagine that you would need for LARP there. They had furs, clothing, bags, belts, armor, weapons, hats, coats, everything. And they even had a little convenience store on the corner, which I had no idea about. So this was super cool to learn. They had slushies that they sold. Slushies, they had sodas, they had um, food in case you needed to cook things. Like I think there was like freaking spaghetti in, in the box that you could like buy and then just go cook in your camp pot or whatever. They had soap, shampoos, like it had like everything that you might've forgotten, for example, or you know, you just needed because you're like, oh, I want spaghetti today. And I didn't buy spaghetti beforehand. So that was pretty cool. And then there was also a little tent that had homemade goods and had thrift store stuff at it. And that's where I got this and where my friend got this at Beekaline. They had some really cool things there. I didn't go into the last day, so I think I missed out on a lot of stuff, but I got some of the handmade things like, like these two hoods, this, and my black bag. And then there was the auberge, which is where we spent some of our time. The auberge is an actual inn and tavern area. So the first floor is a tavern and there's a lot of tables and chairs for people to hang out. I played some liar's dice there 
and talked with some of the people from the Voyage North and stuff in there and had drinks with them and it was super awesome. And then the second floor is actually where the rooms are for the actual inn. There's only maybe like a handful of rooms. I wanna say there's like five or six and people can actually purchase the rooms to stay in during the events. And it was really cool. They had like a little balcony and then there was a porch outside on the first floor, I believe. And then down beneath was a registry area. So like if you are a new guild and you need to register at the game. And then there were bookshelves upon bookshelves of just old looking books. And they were mostly in French, but there were some English ones. And it was really comfortable because nobody was really sitting down down there. Most of the time they were mostly going to the registration. So you could just sit down in the tables and read books. And me and Matt did that a couple of times. It was just really cozy down there. A good place to go if everything's a little overwhelming, if it's open. And there were so many guilds with unique aesthetics, with unique things about them. I think there was one guild that they weren't quite sure on how the mechanics of this worked when, I, when they were explaining it to me, some other people on the side. But there was a guild that was coming by chanting and stuff. And they said that they were able to steal your soul somehow. And that was really crazy. And and there's only like one way to get it back and it was just kind of interesting and then about guilds they each have sort of a focus so uh, Ordo Sevilla's exploration it relates to the online game and there's exploration commercial thieving guilds and so on and so forth and yeah, like I said, this is relating to the online game because the the online game and the in-person game are connected. It's a symbiotic relationship there. And so if something happens in the online game, it affects stuff in the in-person game and vice versa. So the online game is optional. You could go every single year and never bother with it, but it's definitely a unique and a very intriguing layer to the complexity of Beakling. It's played throughout the year, the online game. You need a guild and in your guild, you can do certain things on the board and uh, population cards come into play because they need population for certain things and that, that kind of thing, basically. So there's a lot of like goods that you can earn through questing and then you give them to the guild and it helps them out uh, for the online game and to continue to progress and get bigger and more successful. But it's a pretty cool thing to know about Beakling that there is an online game and that you can participate in that. Now speaking of guilds, there was no time where more guilds were in one place than on the battlefield, I'd say. There were quite a few different battles throughout the week and I participated in all of them except for one and that one I was helping pour water for participants of the battle. So I believe the first one was a free-for-all type of battle in the forest, which was crazy. Matt actually got a small injury, so we walked off the field. But after that, the rest of the, the battles were on the field where the fort was. My experience fighting was super fun. I did a couple of different things. I tried to be a skirmisher at first, which was fun. So I went to spear later and I was on the line and I had a lot of fun with that, like battling on the line. There's just something really incredible about being on a field with so many people, at least a thousand people in these fights. Everybody clad in armor with their weapons and with that level of teamwork and organization. And also the friendliness of people. People would smile at you when you got a good hit in and that kind of thing which was really neat that kind of sportsmanship was really neat to see especially because I'm not the worst fighter but I'm not the best fighter and so you know when you do get one or two hits in and they smile at you kind of you're like oh I feel good about myself <laughs> So even if you feel like you're not really great at battle, uh, being on the line and supporting each other, uh, you'll get a couple good hits in and you can take pride in that, you know? So besides just people, there were more war machines on the battlefield, like cannons. And then there were also monsters like a tree ant and a wolf beast and an angel. So that was pretty cool to see. I do have this kind of funny story, which wasn't funny at the time, but one of these times that I ended up coming from the revive point back to the field, one of the like commanders or people in charge of the ordo stuff were like hey lines falling over there you need to hurry kind of thing and i was like okay and so i like run a little bit or i jog over and i see what looked to me like a loose line so it was like people over here and people over there and then there were two people facing each other and I was like oh this guy has having trouble killing this one dude well I'm an idiot so I run up and I kill the enemy I get killed by our teammate on purpose he hits me in the head three times and I was like I was like just killed my smile and I was like confused as hell so the marshal is laughing at me I don't know why because he speaks in French to me about whatever is happening and I I'm like kind of dumbstruck about what just happened so I I don't say anything like I'm like staring dead at him like probably like this 
just looking at him as he's speaking. And then one of the healers comes by, thank God. They come over. They're like, do you need healing? And then the marshal says something to them in French and they go, English? And then he, he says, I think he said like to heal the guy. And then also told me that they were having a duel. I had run in on a duel, just out of nowhere, stabbed the guy and that was what happened. So I imagine that was really comical from, and it was comical to the marshal, but it was really comical from everybody else's point of view. I felt awful because the man who killed me was mad. He was really mad at me. And it's not like I knew. And so I felt awful and I walked away. I didn't go back to battle. I went back to the like the respawn point and just kind of hung out there. I felt so, so bad about it. So I just hung out there until it was over and it really soured the experience for me at the time I was like oh I feel so embarrassed I feel so stupid but I heard that this kind of thing happens all the time like people have duels and other people interrupt them on accident I laugh about it now but like I said it felt awful at the time overall it was like nothing I've ever experienced before hundreds of people on the field at one time organized fighting People are shouting commands and moving units and, and making shield walls with spears in between. It's just, it's very, it's very cool. But there weren't fights all the time. And the rest of the time, there was always stuff going on. There were concerts that happened at night. There was drinking. There were shows like a monster fight, which seemed like it would have been additionally extremely funny if I spoke French, but because I couldn't, it was just cool to watch. And then there was this incredible pyro show immediately after that, and that was really interesting. There's so many food places to go to, and there was also a lot of really beautiful nature. There's so much on the property. There is just loads of forests. You could just walk through the trails if you wanted to. There were other fights going on throughout the week, and I believe they also hired players as mercenaries, which is a super cool thing. I didn't do that, but I had friends who did, and they said it was super fun. There were little events going on, like, you know, like a normal LARP. There were things that you could interact with and quests. And then Beagling had a talent show that it hosted for the first time, apparently, which is I heard was amazing. I didn't even know it was going on, and I missed it, and I'm so sad. And there were other events, like the King showed up for Nova Vitae because they're new and he greeted everybody and that was pretty cool and there was just so many little things to get involved with and I didn't even do half of them but there was always something you could be doing and that was what was really cool about it whatever you wanted to do you know you could do it there so food I love food there are a lot of different food options at Beagleen they had a place for poutine which I had for the first time when I was there and I thought that was super cool it tastes amazing. I thought it sounded really gross, but then when I had it, I was like, oh, this is actually really good. And then there was like a Mediterranean food truck and then a little bakery and a couple other little like shops that sold like salads and, and uh, sandwiches and things like that. And then there was like a little coffee shop that me and Matt actually went to one, one morning and I tried a croissant from there and had a hot chocolate and we sat when it was the earlier part of the week, I think when it was still raining and so we sat on the porch there and I remember this is just a cute little thing but I just remember laughing because we were sitting there drinking our our drinks and Matt was actually steaming like steam was coming off of him and it was because we figured out but we were like wait what's going on then we were laughing because it was the wool cloaks even though it was rainy the wool cloaks were very heavy and hot and even though the cloaks were pretty soaked it was still so hot that it made him steam, so I don't know. It was just a cute little memory. And I feel like my time at Beacolin is filled with a lot of little memories like that. So in addition to the things that Beacolin itself does, the Voyage North has tons of little events happening. Within the Voyage North, there are three guilds, Ordo Servi, which I was in, the March Wardens, and Nova Vitae. Within each of those, there are houses so that you are able to make friends with people more closely because the guilds get so big that it's hard to be friends with everybody and this way you can make friends a lot easier. And then within each of these houses, there are different sort of genres of them. So you have singing ones, combat ones, role play focus ones and things like that. And then they host their own events. Some are open to everybody and some to just their guilds. And I was part of House Fletcher, which is a house about having a good time and helping others have a good time with the motto of everyone is a Fletcher and no one drinks alone. We had one really unique event 
that was where we ate berries, magic berries, and it changed the taste of everything that you ate. And so there was a basket with fruit and we would try each fruit together and, and just sort of marvel at the different tastes. And then we did that also with our alcohol, although some of the alcohol just made taste bad, but the sangria, it made taste really sweet, which was really nice. It was, it was a very unique experience. Then there were houses that were music and performance based. All the performance houses, they banded together and they made a little talent show. And that was super cool to be a part of. I sung a song and forgot the lyrics halfway through. I'm always gonna carry a songbook soon when I'm at LARP because I don't want that to happen again. But there was so much going on throughout Beagle Lane. There was like a day where gnomes were around a lot. Like a lot of people had gnome hats on and were speaking in high pitched voices. <laughs> And they had a, a gnome mosh pit, which was hilarious. And I, I heard that was actually a little dangerous, but they had stuff like that. Then there was somebody who was really hilarious that showed up to our gentle merchant's cart. Princess Dwarf Dwarf Dwarf. She had this beautiful pink cone hat like a princess. And she had the little lace coming down from the top of it. She was very hilarious. She traded a friendship potato for a necklace and it was very funny. So one of the things that I didn't put in originally was this story that I would be remiss to not include, which is me thinking that Princess Dwarf Dwarf Dwarf's name was Princess Dwarf 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 Enchanté. I thought that was her name for a little bit there before somebody who spoke French in our group was like, you know, you know what that means, right? Pleasure to meet you. And I was like, hmm, oops, uh, that was my bad. And it was just really funny and they gave me crap about it for a little bit. But I thought I'd add that in there. I thought her name was Princess Dwarf 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 Enchanté. So. <laughs> Later after that, after the gnomes were there and then gone, there was a poster that said, remember the gnomes with a cute little cartoon drawing of a gnome underneath it. There was also a fae ceremony and that was pretty cool. That happened at night. So there were some like little glowy things and we sung uh, some interesting songs on the way up and we had a lot of fun. You got to choose if you attended you and you wanted to, you got to choose what uh, kind of group you were with. They all had like different beliefs and stuff like that. So that was kind of cool. I'm actually in one of the official photos for the house we chose. And I definitely look hilarious, like the goofy peasant girl that other people see me as. <laughs> actually, I'm in multiple official photos, but in every single one, I look ridiculous on brand. I am not photogenic. Then I learned that one of the in-game religions, or at least an event, The Wild Hunt has an actual movie based off of it. It's also called The Wild Hunt. I'll have a link to it below the IMDB page or whatever. So if you wanted to see it, you can. It's the, I thought that was pretty cool. Then about the gentle merchants, which I have mentioned a few times, but we're a group of LARP merchants who sell real goods for in-game currency. Our founder, Truveld, has an actual cart for the members of the Gentle Merchants to sell their goods on. It was a massive hit at the event and it was really, really fun to be a part of. I enjoyed interacting with customers and I got to put on like a little puppet show with the fur that I have uh, for some of the kids that came by. So that was super cool. I laughed a ton, I had a lot of fun with it. So I did do one quest at Bikalin. It was about picking flowers and we went with somebody who knew a lot about flowers. I believe she was like also a gardener and so, she taught us about the flowers like legitimately and she taught us about the bursting pods of these plants that that's how they spread their seeds she actually could demonstrate for us so when you touched it it would just burst and then it would all go everywhere and it was just it was pretty cool to hear that stuff then there was a time there was another time there was another story I wanted to get on the horse carts I waited so long because you know I thought eventually I'd see one where there was room and that just didn't happen to be the case. I should have waited for one earlier in the week, but at the end of the week when people were leaving, they needed the the big horse carts to bring people in and out of Beacon Lane. So I didn't get on one of those, but I was so determined. I was like, I need to get on that. I asked one of the marshals and he was very, very kind. I'm like, I know this isn't your job, but how do I get on the horse cart? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, well, you know, the, the other one's coming. And like, it was, a, it was a horse cart that transported the trash. And I was like, sure, how do I ask in French? And so he, he tried to teach me. And the only thing I remember is, and this is probably, if you speak French, I am so sorry. I can't, I need to learn. Hopefully I will. The only thing I remember is like on the back of, like, can I ride in your cart or something? And I think it means that, like the back or something, a backe, sorry. And so, <laughs> 
I got on the horse cart with the man who took the trash uh, from other people and that was that was really cool because I actually talked to him and heard about his story and it was it was really heartwarming. So yeah that that kind marshal got me on a horse cart that transported trash. One of my friends I made at Vicoline comes by and she called me the trash queen. So that was fun. Ah, uh, friendship. I came away with a lot of really great memories and a lot of really great friends. I think everyone who I interacted with for your kindness and being so amazingly sweet and kind. Beakling was an experience that I'm never gonna forget. I've probably forgotten to add something to this story, but there was just so much to mention. Please feel free if you also want to Beakling to share your story and experience down below or link us a video that you're making or you have made about your Beakling experience. I'd love to see it. I'm sure other people would as well. It, it's pretty cool. It's exciting to listen to hear all the different stories because everybody had a different time. Everybody, without exception. Nobody did the same things and nobody had the same experiences. So it was pretty cool. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.